Sting Ray, and of course when I came out in 63 it was Sting Ray, two words. That morphed into Sting Ray in 68, all one word. And uh, General Motors, with their seventh generation Corvette, kind of nicknamed the C7, has brought back the name Sting Ray, and there's a little Sting Ray emblem on the uh, fender to identify it. Tom Peters, Art Center alumni and designer at General Motors. He's wearing his Corvette flag shirt. Talk about the task of a legendary car, the seventh generation, a legendary name going back on it. That's, that's kind of a monumental assignment. It isn't like uh, designing a wheel cover for a cruise as far as in the design department at General Motors. Yeah, well, I mean, everything uh, has to be, I think, creatively addressed, whether it is a cruise or a Spark, or even all the, way, all the way up to trucks and Corvettes. But there is something unique and special about a car like this. It has a rich history. And you really want, to, when you're designing it, you want to draw upon that. But I think it's a designer's job to, um, uh, to you know, take it to the next level and look forward in the future and do your favorite to do something different and push it and maybe even scare yourself and you know, kind of scare other people as well because um, I think if you do things that are expected that you know, it doesn't last very long, but you got to be careful about how you do it. Um, the lamps, for instance, is, uh, uh, is kind of a lightning rod on, on these cars. So I've heard, because a lot of guys are still lamenting that the pop-up headlights went away with the previous generation. I, I, uh, not lately, but I've received a lot of hate mail about that. And But you know, um, even internally we had a lot of consternation around that uh, subject matter. But it was done for the correct reasons. This car is not only meant to be beautiful, but it's a serious machine that operates it you know, um, very high areas of performance. And so the functionality is incredibly important. You know, it's, it's, a, it's meant to be serious fun. So when you're in the realm of 200 miles an hour, uh, it, it has to perform flawlessly. So in terms of the lamps, you want to use the, the best technology that you could, that's available. And to me, what I mentioned to the folks internally and what I express to people outside, even our design team that says, I want you to push uh, and push it as different as you can, but when you stand back and look at the overall statement, if it still says Corvette to you, then you know it's successful and it's the right thing to do. So we went through the headlamp, so, and it's funny because, um, well, at least I think it's funny. The sixth generation, uh, if you remember the 15th generation, had the taillights that were kind of oval. I said, you know, we're going to put round taillights back on that thing, you know. So I, I pushed the, the, the team to go with round lamps on that one, but this one I said, you know what? Don't do round tail lamps. So you're the guy, because there was more controversy. You talk about the headlights. I mean, the tail lights, there must have been, you know, millions and millions of, you know, Facebooks and emails and, oh, my God, what have they done? But isn't that kind of the point of it? Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, you, don't take, again, you don't take that lightly. And, and having lived the experience of the headlamps and realizing you know, these cars are a sign of the times and uh, with technology and the design. So with the tail lamps, uh, that's exactly I said, guys, I want you to just throw everything out. But the only thing I want you to do with the tail lamps, because they are so iconic graphically, is uh, take advantage of the technology, the indirect LED technology. Uh, it, just, it just needs to be dual element. And, that, and I left them to that. And they came up with these wonderful shapes. I said, oh, the other thing I, I mentioned to them, I want it to be 3D sculptural. Because again, harkening back and drawing upon the rich history and heritage, um, if you, yeah, you, you know, the, the classic cars always had a lot of sculpture to the lamps. They weren't just you know, a bunch of stuff under under a lens. So, so take it, that, that, that'll expand your range of creativity to get the sculpture and form into the lamps like we did with the body. And that just makes it all that more interesting and exciting and wonderful from an artistic standpoint, and it's functional as well, so. Well, we've got, of course, these iconic 1963 Corvette. And then, you know, when, when the C3 came along in 68, that was based off the Mako Shark, I believe. And, and so when you were a young uh, designer, maybe even before school, I remember when I was in high school, we all drew Corvettes on our peachy folders. Um, and those peachy folders didn't get me into Art Center, but obviously someone like you probably had talent. Are those fluid shapes of Corvettes through the years, are those kind of what everyone sort of doodled when they were gearing up for an eventual, you know, coming to Art Center? Um. Probably, because actually I brought, uh, I was going to pull it out later on, I, I always, as a kid I didn't know what design was, I didn't know about Art Center or what cars were done, I just knew I loved them, I was drew them since I was four or five, so I was told. Yeah. And um, well, I drew everything, but probably the biggest influence was probably at Big Daddy Roth. Um, I used to draw those in, in Hot Rod, you open them up and they had uh, the t-shirts, and I just referenced those all the time, so I, I brought us. Uh, sketch I did back then, and in 1969, 
uh, Corvette and Camaro, so I could show those later on. But anyways, but did you have a monster sticking his big hairy hand up with a gear shift sticking out the roof? Because that's you know yeah, iconic. I did, I did that, but I, these were they got the big uh, tires and uh, the headers hanging out and all that. You know, and that's where how I learned how to draw ellipses, trying to just study those those images. And I used to uh, print them at school and sell them for a quarter to the kids. You know, your first paid gig. <laughs> Well, uh, talk about the, let's get back to the C7 a little bit, the new Stingray, uh, I don't know that I've seen uh, maybe more than one or two on the road, I know they're trickling into the dealership, people have been waiting for them, but it seems to me you guys have a home run on your hands. Oh, thank you, um, again, I, you, know, you, want, you want to create a different statement and something that's beautiful, and I will tell you, I'm here representing, i got to tell you, a very talented team of designers, engineers, and sculptors, and I like to emphasize sculptors as a matter of fact, because I think this car is about sculpture. Every millimeter on this car is tuned in the wind tunnel. However, um, I, you know, in this age of technology, we certainly utilize that for precision and all that goes along with it, speed and accuracy. But I will tell you, there is no substitute for the, the human hand expressed artistry. And I think that takes an outstanding car, makes it phenomenal. So I, you know, to me, again, I, I, I like to coin a phrase in this too. It says, it's just a pretty sketch until the sculptors get a hold of it and make it 3D, but I firmly believe with, the car, with my experience with the cars I've been involved with over the, the, the years that that when you have hand sculptors working with clay and then getting that translated into the math, it goes into cutting the steel and forming the body panels, whether the composite or steel or aluminum, and you put it together on a car, put paint over it, that, that magic, that passion, that artistry, I think comes through and people, it resonates with people and they get it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. In fact, I was talking to Peter Brock earlier, we were talking about, you know, we are here at this mecca of car design. The transportation department at Art Center is legendary. And we've got students here. We've got recent graduates, we've got current students. So probably like Peter, you probably like to interact with them and, and tell them what you just told us. And, you know, it's got to be drawn. It's got to have some human passion and then some human passion to sculpt it. Yep. In the 3D, um, I, I would emphasize, uh, you got to do the sketch, but you got to get in 3D as quickly as possible. The other thing I tell people, whether they're a student, the, the target market for this, you're talking about kids. I said, I designed, I had the guys design this for nine and 10 year olds. Because everybody remembers their, their first ride, first experience with uh, Corvettes. You know, mine was 63, uh, in 63, that's dating me in third grade. And, and the guy's dad drove him up in one. In fact, he had two, two silver split windows. I knew he had two because I used to wait off the bus for him to arrive. And one of the one of the stingrays had a TV and a center console that he had put in. You thought he was George Jetson or something? Well, I, I would say it was like a flying saucer landed and dropped uh, you know a kid off from Mars. It was like amazing. But um, anyway, I tell folks to you know look at the car, but feel free, please touch the car, run your hands over. I tell people to stick their hands in the tail lamps because yeah, I mean we, we live with these cars, but some people don't realize that. That is 3D back there, and people expect there to be a lens over it, and there isn't. So I say, hey, stick your hand in the tail lamp, you know, if, you know, check it out and understand the sculpture. So I invite everybody to do that, some of, those, some of the shapes on the car. Well, you heard it from him. You can touch the car. You can feel the tail lights. Thank you so much for Tom Peters. How about a nice round of applause? He is a rock star here today with a rock star of a car. And uh, I imagine some students that are here are going to be designing maybe the 8th uh, and or ninth generation car with you over at General Motors. So thank you so much, Tom Peters.